Hi, welcome to vlog number six. I was asked about the thing at the beginning of my vlog, so I'm gonna talk about what it is, where it came from, and how I use it as a map. Not everyone believes what you believe. My beliefs do not require them to. That structure is a map of the five elements as represented by Vajrayana, or what is commonly called Tibetan Buddhism. Where the original teachings of the historical Buddha compromised Theravada Buddhism, Mahayana clarified the nature of Nirvana and the phenomenal world in relation to each other, and Vajrayana showed how to achieve what the Buddha taught in a single lifetime. This structure of the five elements is found in Buddhist stupas, monuments that contain important relics, and also in prayer flags. The reason I use it at the beginning of my reel is I find it's an elegant symbol that can also represent the elements of my work in 3D graphics, modeling, animation, texturing, lighting, and effects. In Buddhism, the elements represent the natural or phenomenal world, earth, water, fire, air, and space. The Buddha said once in a sutra, it is just within this fathom-long body, with its perception and intellect, that I declare that there is the cosmos, the origination of the cosmos, the cessation of the cosmos, and the path of practice leading to the cessation of the cosmos. The cessation of the cosmos, or end of suffering, can be navigated via the map of the cosmos given in Vajrayana practice. The five elements can be related to the body via the chakra system, which was first documented in the Havajra Tantra, came through the Hatha Yoga Pradikapa, and has become well known in the seven chakra system taught today. As the chakra system made its way through the ages, the chakras became associated with different phenomena, the body, emotions, mind, sensation, and space. Whether you believe in bioenergetics or chakras as focal points for meditation, the system points to a helpful mnemonic of causation similar to that mentioned by the Buddha in Udana 1.3. Within space, we interact by sensation. If we mentally judge these sensations and events to be good, bad, or indifferent, we experience a correlated emotion in the body. Notice that at the height of the chakras are the pineal and pituitary glands, which are located squarely in the limbic system, which is in charge of hormone distribution that controls emotions. It may be thought that in meditation one is supposed to suppress emotion. There's no need to fight the signal your body is giving you. Instead, look at what it's pointing to. What is a meditation? Don't say, hey, get out to your mind. Don't fight. But don't say, yes, sir. Make friends. In fact, according to Roger Walsh, MD, PhD, meditation teacher, about 80% of the questions he's asked about meditation are better handled by therapeutic techniques. Working with repressed emotions and triggers is often referred to as shadow work. And rather than going into it in depth, I recommend checking out the work of Diane Musho Hamilton. On another perspective, Ramana Maharshi once said, all that is required to realize the self is to be still. Even in Buddhist traditions, Ajashanti, an American teacher trained in Zen says, even though it's completely counterintuitive, even though it goes against every instinct that we have, it's possible to come to see that the only way to get out of the dream state, the trap of egoic consciousness, is to allow it to be as it is. So I'm supposed to work really hard and not try it all at the same time? Yes. Given that there are so many reported benefits to meditation, I'll leave you with this. Unlocking one's mind means facing all the things we've hidden or are afraid to look at. At the same time, by doing so, it allows us the freedom to act with a level of energy unburdened by repression. As the Vajrayana tradition emphasizes, all beings are by their nature enlightened. It's just a matter of realizing it. <laughs>